Hello, my name is Irina and I've been traveling around Jamaica for the last six years. And I can tell you for sure, the one thing to know when planning a trip to Jamaica is that this country has been misrepresented in the media probably more than any other country in the world. It was bad enough with television, but with the rise of social media, it got only worse. For example, there is a video called 10 things not to do in Jamaica produced by YouTube channel Destination Tips. I would have ignored that video, but it has over 300,000 views, ranks number one on YouTube for things not to do in Jamaica, and there is some really good search volume for this. So let's check if any of the things they mention are actually true. If you're planning a trip to Jamaica or if you're a Jamaican, this video is is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I'll have my computer here, my tea here, so let's watch the destination tips for Jamaica they want to give us. When you book your trip to Jamaica, the odds are good that you're headed for a spirited but relaxing island vacation. But there's much more to Jamaica than great music and gorgeous weather. So follow these tips to keep safe and have fun while visiting Jamaica. Know before you go! 1. Don't forget about the State Department. You should know before you travel that both sexual assault and armed robbery are common throughout the nation. In some cases, even inside gated resorts. Sorry. Really? You're starting a video with first point, beware there is crime in Jamaica. What is the tip not to do? Like, don't do crime? Or what? Let's watch it again. One, don't forget about the State Department. Oh, don't forget the State Department. I see. Okay, let's go to the US Department of State website and check the information there. Mm -hmm. Jamaica level three, reconsider travel. That, that's because of COVID, uh, but also crime. Yep, the video is right. Um, according to the Department of State, we see here violent crimes, home invasions, armed robbery, sexual assault. Sounds like a dangerous place indeed. Um, why not go to London instead? Let's see what safety advice the State Department gives for the United Kingdom. Be vigilant as pickpocketing, mugging and snatch and grab theft of mobile phones, watches and jewellery can occur. Travellers have been robbed or sexually assaulted while using unlicensed taxis. Potential for isolated violence related to the political situation in Northern Ireland. A threat of violence with the use of firearms and explosion. Terrorist groups continue plotting possible near-term attacks in Europe. Okay, sounds like the United Kingdom is a dangerous place as well. Let's check Norway, one of the safest countries in the world, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's do this, safety. Okay, so safety information. Oh, look at that. Crime, Norway has a low level of crime and violent crime is uncommon. Ah, thank you, thank you. Finally, it is safe to go there, right? Pickpocketing and petty theft occur more frequently in major tourist areas, but at least there is no violent crime, okay? Oh, wait, all the rare. Violent and weapons-related crimes do occur in areas known to have drug trafficking and gang problems. Norway has gang problems? <laughs> Sorry, not funny. But I definitely learned something new today. On a serious note, US Department of State is one of the worst resources you can get travel information. Because the only travel advice you're going to get there is the following. There is the United States, which is the safest place on earth. And then there is the rest of the world that is uncivilized, full of crime and terrorism. And please, that's not what American people think, obviously. That's a website created by the US government. And before you blame that government, just take a moment to think why they present this information in such a way. This is because of the very same reason why you can see a message on a box of pizza saying, before you eat your pizza, make sure you take it out of the box first. It's not like people are stupid and will eat a box. 
In fact, it's because people are smart and they will eat a box and then try to get money from the company. There was no warning. I didn't know I shouldn't be eating boxes. Pay me now. The US Department of State Travel Information is not for travelers. It's for themselves to protect their own backs. In case something does happen to someone somewhere, they can go, see, we warned you. That's why they will put everything possible in there. Even the most ridiculous, out of date, exaggerated nonsense imaginable. And I'm not saying there is no crime in the world. Of course there is. I'm just saying that this website is not a good source for travel advice. So this destination tip they gave is completely wrong. Anyway, let's get back to that video. Two, don't expect help from the cops. The Jamaican police force is universally underpaid and understaffed. Okay, this part they got almost right, but they flipped it upside down. It's actually the tourists who are prioritized in Jamaica. This is partially because hardly anything ever happens to tourists in Jamaica. And if it does, it will become a big event all across the news. You can also see this uh, so-called tourist police in the highly touristic areas. They have this kind of uniform. So generally, yes, you can expect help from the police. If anyone, that would be you, a tourist. The problem is, if the police gets understaffed, it would be the locals who will suffer first from this. And this is unfair. And this is the problem that the government is working on solving right now. But yeah, other points he mentions are correct. Jamaican police is underpaid. Is there a country where police is overpaid? Do let me know. I was told that the police officer in Jamaica gets about 1,000 US dollars per month, plus some really good benefits, which isn't too bad by Jamaican standards, by the way, but obviously it's not the job that will make you rich. And in general, it's one of the most difficult jobs you can get in your life ever. Okay, what else do they say? Their attention is mostly focused on more serious crime. So a tourist stolen camera doesn't rank high on the list of priorities. Well, a more serious crime, like murder, is more prioritized than stolen camera. I'm sorry, but should it be otherwise? Yeah, I understand that they want to say that there is not enough staff, so they're not going to deal with any theft. But this is simply not true. Of course, there are different departments. One deals with one thing, the other one deals with the other thing. I mean, like in any police, claiming otherwise is just ridiculous. But you know what's even more ridiculous? That they're putting these points in the video at all. I mean, they're not relevant to 99.9% .9 of the tourists. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Three, don't try to get around without a driver. In Jamaica, they drive on the wrong, well, left side of the road. It can be a little perplexing, but for a small fee, you can hire a driver for the day to help you get around efficiently and safely. Okay, there are several problems with that. I thought the actor who was doing the voiceover had a British accent, no? Does that mean he's not aware that Britain also drives on the wrong side of the road? <laughs> and it's not even the wrong side, it's the correct side, or at least what it originally was like. The roads were originally built by the Roman Empire. And when they got on the horse to ride on the road, there was a question which side to choose. And they chose the left side because more people are right-handed and that's where they hold their sword. So when riding a horse on the left side of the road, you are protected here and here you have the sword to fight, I don't know, the upcoming traffic. That's why actually driving on the right side is wrong. There is a video on YouTube that explains why we drive on different sides and it does a really good job. So I'm going to leave a link in the description. So if you're interested, please have a look. Anyway, yes, you can rent a car and drive in Jamaica. It is safe to do as much as driving can be safe in general. I already have a video uh, that talks about driving in Jamaica and you can watch it right here. And if you want a private driver, sure, there are excellent private drivers in Jamaica. And that's a great thing about spending some time in Jamaica. You have a choice how you want to do it. So let's check out the next point. Four, don't backpack through Jamaica. Why not? I did that. I did it with my friends. I did it by myself. What's the problem? People who backpack through Jamaica essentially put a target on their back. 
attracting the worst of the island's criminal element. Your best bet is to spend most of your time in highly populated areas. This is some really bad advice. As a traveler who's done quite a lot of backpacking and hitchhiking around different countries, backpacking is one of the safest ways to travel. This is because of three reasons. Backpackers usually visit places off the beaten path where foreigners are not expected. So the chances of meeting somebody who suddenly decides to rob you is next to zero. It's actually the crowded areas where most pickpockets will be operating. Really big cities like Moscow, New York, where it's much easier to commit a crime and get away with it. It's pure logic. If you're a thief and want to find people with money, where are you gonna go? Oh, in the woods. Two, most people realize that backpackers travel on a budget. So of all the tours, these are the least interesting ones. Yes, they will have a camera, a phone that is locked. Um, maybe a couple of one US dollar bills. And yes, they will have jewelry, sure. Bracelet I got in Goa eight years ago, still pretty good. Or the one from South Africa when I was lucky to meet some Amak Osa people. And this is my third point. Things that are really valuable to backpackers cost absolutely nothing when it comes to money. And that's why backpackers are not a target ever for thieves. Anyway, in Jamaica, I went backpacking in Blue Mountains and I did camping there. I had a camera with me, yes, so I was doing filming. And here's the night photo from my tent in Blue Mountains. This was taken in Bangor Ridge community, kindest people, and it's so beautiful. Don't backpack through Jamaica. That destination video got it completely wrong. Do backpacking in Jamaica. Actually, not enough backpackers in Jamaica. This tourism industry is not developed in Jamaica at all, which is a shame. We need to do something about it. So I will be producing more content on this subject. Next point. <laughs> Five, do your research. Yes, exactly. Do your research. I agree. Don't listen to these guys who have never ever traveled around Jamaica and have no idea what they're talking about. This video is called 10 things not to do in Jamaica. Why are they suddenly giving advice to people on what they should do? How is that even relevant to the subject of this video? And why are they always bringing up this random footage from the stock that has nothing to do with Jamaica? What is this? Six, don't look at the merchants. When you're browsing at the shops on the island, avoid direct eye contact with the merchants. They will take it as a sign that you want to buy something. But if you're just looking, keep your eyes on the merchandise and not on the owner. Don't look at the merchants. When people are talking to me, it's actually polite to look at them. At least that's what my mummy told me when I was in a kindergarten. I thought all kids know that. Well, apparently not the author of this video. I want to point out though, I do see tourists in Jamaica who do something like this, walking, okay? And somebody suddenly starts talking to them and they would just ignore and continue like with his face, you know? Mm-mm, I don't hear you, mm-mm. This is so rude, especially in Jamaica. I mean, Jamaicans might get the perception that People are snobby or something. Well, some people are, but most likely these people just learned this tip from another credible source. Don't look people in the eye. Or what? They're gonna force you to buy things? <laughs> it's a horrible advice. Let me give you a proper one. When merchants in Jamaica start talking to you, turn your face to that person and say hello. If they're offering goods you're not interested, just say, no thank you, or I'm just looking. That's it, they're not going to run after you. And look at that photo they put here, with all these people smiling, friendly, doing exactly the opposite of what the voiceover suggests. <laughs> oh. 
Seven, don't use American dollars. While good old fashioned greenbacks are welcome on the island, you should consider using the Jamaican dollar. You'll find that you don't have to worry about exchange rates and the locals will appreciate it. Okay, I'm not sure where this guy got this information. You can use both, American dollars or Jamaican dollars. It's very convenient. It's better to use American dollars when you're paying for attractions like entrance fees. Or when you're paying your private drivers, they will appreciate American dollar more because they can save it until the exchange rate goes up. There are certain situations when Jamaican dollars are preferable. Like if you're using public transport and you need to pay, say, 160 Jamaican dollars. Or if you want to buy local food in a small community, people wouldn't have change in US dollars. So, yeah, for that, better to have some Jamaican dollars with you. Eight, don't get up tight. Okay, number eight, they're given a tip how you shouldn't be in a rush. But who is? I thought these were supposed to be destination tips for tourists. People on holiday are not in a rush. <laughs> Next. Nine, don't be afraid to explore. There is a heck of a lot more to the island of Jamaica than just lounging on its world-class beaches. Really? Now he says it. After all the points mentioned in the video, point number one, crime is everywhere. Point number two, police is not going to help. Point number nine, don't be afraid to explore. This video has no logic. But yes, number nine is good advice. Don't be afraid to explore. Jamaica is an incredible treasure of places and people, for sure. Now the last moment, come on. <laughs> 10. Don't worry about finding a good beach. The best part about Jamaica is that no matter where you book your reservations, Jamaica will have a pristine stretch of golden sand waiting for you. Don't spend a ton of time trying to find... Wait, wait, that's actually not true. This is setting wrong expectations. So when people arrive, they're going to think that there is a beach everywhere. Nope. That's not the case. I assume he's talking about coastline, not all Jamaica. But even then, it's not like the beach is everywhere. And it doesn't have to be. I mean, these guys, you have to be really talented to get even the good things wrong. Anyway, I already have a video that explains all types of beaches you can find in Jamaica. So please check it out if you haven't watched it yet. So, just like I said, the one thing to know when planning a trip to Jamaica is that this country has been misrepresented in the media a lot. That is why do not rely on advice provided on such platforms as US Department of State or on something like TripAdvisor where 99% of information is like people sharing their subjective one-time experience that has nothing to do with your upcoming trip. Instead, you can subscribe to this channel. But even then, take everything you hear on YouTube with a grain of salt. Because no matter how much experience a YouTuber might have, all humans make mistakes. Now for our Jamaican subscribers and passionate people about Jamaica, I need a little help. I'd like to deconstruct and debunk every single nonsense that has been produced by the media about Jamaica over the years. So if you know of any outrageous material that was popular at some point of time, please state the name in the comment section down below. No links needed, just the name. If you believe these debunking videos produced by a foreigner like this one can help all the foreigners to understand Jamaica better, don't forget to share this video with your friends. I know we're not going to get 300,000 views, but at least let's get some people to see this. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.